Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan, and today I have a book review for you. It's kind of a random Goosebumps book to review. Uh, at this current point, aside from the activity book, I've pretty much reviewed every single movie tie-in for the 2015 Goosebumps movie. Uh, all the books that tie into that, this is the last one of the regular books that's not an activity book that ties into that that I own. Um, I don't know why I wanted to go ahead and pick this up and read it. It's like 100 pages. It's not a very long book. It's not even like the length of a Goosebumps book. So I kind of just wanted to look through it and read it and talk about it, but then I realized about halfway through that I'm stupid and I didn't think about this, but uh, this is going to be kind of a half-hearted review, because, and I'll explain that more as I go along. Uh, the book is called Goosebumps Monster Survival Guide, all the tips and tricks you'll need to fight an invasion in your hometown, and it is written by um, Susan Lurie, or Lori, I don't know, it's L-U-R-I-E. This is the book. Everybody pretty much saw this around the time that the Goosebumps film came out in 2015, and I have mostly given positive reviews to the Goosebumps movie tie-in books, whether it be Haunted Halloween, whether it be the movie novel for the first film, whether it be Slappy's Revenge, I've pretty much given positive reviews a lot of the time for this. This is one of those books I wasn't really excited to read. It's a monster survival guide. It's probably just going to be little factoids and trivia type things about monsters, and that's exactly what it is. Um, that's not necessarily bad. For somebody who's new to Goosebumps, a younger viewer who saw the 2015 film and they were like 5 or 6 or 8, or even 10 for that matter. If you didn't grow up on Goosebumps in the 90s like the rest of us, or in the 2000s like myself kind of did more than the 90s, um, if you saw it around that time, and this was kind of your first exposure to a lot of these monsters that you didn't know anything about, it's a great tool. It's a really great tool, so I'm not going to slant it for that. Um, the thing that I found immediately fascinating about this was the references to a lot of books that are kind of obscure that I did not know were in the film, certain monsters I didn't know were in the film, certain people that were in the film I didn't know about. Uh, I found that immediately fascinating. I thought it was kind of surprising some of the things I saw referenced in here that I didn't think would ever be talked about in Goosebumps ever again for whatever reason because of Parachute Press uh, going out of business or being bought out or whatever you want to call that. Um, there was a lot of stuff that's been brought to my attention with this book that kind of surprised me a little bit. And I'll kind of delve more into that as I go throughout the book review. This might be a lengthier book review for just odd reasons, I guess. I have some little things to comment about certain monsters here and there. Um, nothing spoiler-filled. I won't spoil anything. That's my whole channel for anybody who doesn't know if this happens to be the first video you've seen of mine. I don't spoil things here on the channel. Um, if I do, it's very rare, and I do give heads up on that because I don't like to spoil things for people. Because I know not everybody's read all the Goosebumps books. So as I do this review, just be cautious with what I talk about. I won't tell you too much about things. Don't worry too much about all that. Uh, so Monster Survival Guide. It basically opens up being written by Zach Cooper himself, just kind of telling you about, hey, this is a guide to beat all these monsters that we beat. Half of them he didn't even counter in the film. He might have seen them from a distance, but he didn't have to actually deal with them. Um, there were some really surprising references in here and some things I actually learned. Uh, one of the things I referred to earlier in my review a few minutes ago was that I actually didn't get to read the whole book. And that was to kind of save myself from some spoilers. I was dumb. I started the book without thinking about, hey, maybe there's some monsters in here I haven't read the books from. Like, for example, there's the one guy, uh, the Maglani, which when I was reading his page, I was like, I don't know who this guy is. I didn't see him anywhere in the film as far as I know. Maybe he was a background thing like the Haunted Mask. <sighs> which The Haunted Mask is the first thing in the entire book that's talked about, and I did a video talking about how there's proof that there's a cut scene from the first 2015 movie that was supposed to have The Haunted Mask in the bathroom kind of admiring itself, because they give little factoids about where the, the last time you saw this monster doing something. And it references the film, it references books, it re it'll give you trivia about certain monsters, how to beat them and whatnot. At one point it talks about the Calling All Creeps, which I haven't read that book, but I saw that there was a test to find out if you're a creep or not, which I thought was interesting. Uh, being a 25-year-old man reading Goosebumps, a child's book series, I kind of already know the answer to that question, probably. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter, I'm just joking. Um, the book had a very kind of weird tone to how it was written. It was kind of trying to be a little silly, a little jokey, kind of like the 2015 film. Uh, Zach Cooper is speaking in a way that he never talks in the film at all. It's very out of character for that character. Um, the way Dylan Monet, I think is his name, the guy from 13 Reasons Why, played him, it's not the way this book is written. So it's a little bit different in that regard. But one thing I noticed with that guy, <laughs> I was just talking about the... Uh, Muglani, or Muglani, whatever his name is. 
That is apparently, and I didn't find this out until I really, really critically thought about it, and about the references to shrunken heads, that he is the villain from How I Shrunk, or How I Got My Shrunken Head, which is a classic Goosebumps book. I've never read the book. I've seen the TV episodes. I actually own the TV episode, the two-parter, on DVD. So I had no clue who this guy was. And I kept sitting there. They never just dropped the name about the, the shrunken head thing. They just had to use the phrase shrunken head every once in a while. Which most of the time when they're talking about things like uh, Attack of the Graveyard Ghouls, which are in the film, uh, and they're in this book, they actually talk about the title. They talk about it being a Series 2000 book at one point. It's not like a behind-the-scenes book. It just kind of talks about the monsters, you know, and, like, how to beat them. It gives you a little trivia facts, like I said. Nothing like behind-the-scenes footage, like, this is how R.L. Stein came up with this, this creature. It's not like that. So don't go into this book expecting something like that. It's not like that at all. Um, but there's a lot of things in here that I've never heard of <laughs> that I don't think were even in the film that much that I've never heard of. And then a lot of monsters I have heard of that I just haven't read the book yet and didn't want, didn't want to be spoiled. I read at least over 50% of the book. But uh, I got enough of what I was seeing to really kind of take on and understand what I was getting with this book. As I read books in the future, like for example, when I was reading this book, I had just finished Abominable Snowman of Pasadena. Then I was able to read that page. So every time I read, every time I finish one of the books that has a monster that's in this, I'm going to go back and read it and find out that page and find out some... Little weird trivia things, just see what they write up about it. But there was a lot of monsters in here I didn't know anything about. Uh, let's see. What's the first one? The Moglani was one of them. Had no clue what he was talking about. It kind of seemed a little weird. Um, the Praying Mantis from Shocker on Shock Street was referenced in here, and I thought that was kind of odd. The Executioner, I know all about him from the TV episode. I have seen that before. I have not read Night in Terror Tower, so I don't really know a whole lot about that. I skipped over it because I didn't want to spoil for myself in case there was something in the book that I didn't know about the Executioner. And these these pages that are focused on these monsters are only about two pages, sometimes four pages, about these creatures. A uh, little information about them. The Graveyard Ghouls, I haven't read that. Um, the Jack-O-Lanterns were not called Jack-O-Lanterns, they were called Pumpkin Heads, which I thought was a little odd. I don't know. Fifi the Vampire Dog, of course, is from a Goosebumps, uh, Give Yourself Goosebumps book, the Choose Your Own Adventure series. I have not read that, so I wanted to avoid that. Didn't read up on Fifi. I don't know how much of the film's Fifi is actually like the book Fifi, because the Abominable Snowman of Pasadena was next to nothing like how he is in the book. I forgot to mention that in my review. Um, he is nothing like he is in the book at all when it comes to the 2015 film, which I'm fine with. I actually prefer the 2015 film version. Uh, of the creature. Not so much the story, but the creature. I actually mostly like the Pasadena book, for the most part. Um, let's see. Madame Doom. Madame Doom. I haven't read that book. I think it's... Is it Be Careful What You Wish For? I think? I haven't read it. I did not realize, though, that when she appeared in the film that she had, like, black eye contacts where the white of your eyes are. Uh, she wears, like, black contacts there and, like, golden rims for her eyes. I was kind of surprised when I saw the picture that was really close up in her face about that. Uh, it's kind of neat. It's kind of like the picture of the Haunted Mask. The Haunted Mask I've only seen from a distance in the movie, like from that short, like, half a second part that they show her in the film. Uh, they have, a, like, a really good close-up picture of her in this book, so I thought that was pretty cool as a fan of the Haunted Mask. The Blob was in here, and I haven't read that The Blob That Ate Everyone thing. I've seen the TV episode, but I haven't read the book, so I don't really know a whole lot about that, aside from it being a ripoff of an old 50s Steve McQueen film in an 80s Frank Darabont movie remake thing. Um, Captain Long Ben One Leg. I knew this man, and I was surprised that he was even in the film. I don't remember him being in the film, except for like a second. He's a pirate, and he was the villain in my personal favorite of the Deep Trouble books. It was Horrorland number two, Creep from the Deep. It's a fantastic book, so scary. This week I actually got a hardcover library binding edition to that. I actually showed that in my book haul video for the week. I was really surprised to see that he was even in the film. So there's a lot of references in that movie, not just to old classic series monsters from the 1990s. It's kind of like they've got newer stuff in here, which is confirmed with some other monsters that I'll talk about in a moment. But I was surprised to see, uh, what is his name? <laughs> Captain Long Ben One Leg in this. Because that was a great villain. That was like my favorite villain in all the Deep Trouble books. Because Deep Trouble 3, Creep from the Deep was amazing. It was amazing. It was such a good book. I did a review here on my channel in case you want to check that out. Uh, the next one is Cronby the Troll. I didn't know who that was. I've never heard of him. I looked through the article a little bit. I don't know what book he's from. I've never heard of Cronby the Troll. I don't know if it's a Series 2000 thing or 
a most wanted thing, a horror land thing, I don't know. I've never heard of this guy. Uh, Murder the Clown, I was kind of surprised with this because I've only read Nightmare on Clown Street, which is a most wanted book series book, and I wasn't crazy about that, but that's actually the uncle of the main character. I didn't expect him to be a villain from the Goosebumps world. So I'm really kind of perplexed by that, because they mention in that particular trivia section that not only is he in Nightmare on Clown Street, but he was also in the Horrorland books. Now, to my knowledge, I have not seen him pop up anywhere, so I'm assuming he's part of that Horrorland story that goes across all of the books in the Horrorland series. I'm assuming that, because all those books have like 40 pages at the end of each book after the main story is told from the title of the book. They'll have like 40 pages of the time to the previous last 40 pages of the last book. And they have like a whole story that kind of connects to each other in that horror land series for like 19 books, I think. So I don't really know what's going to happen with that. I don't really know if he's in that area of the books or if he has his own book that I don't know about. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I thought that he was just in Nightmare on Clown Street. Uh, but I thought it was weird because the picture of Murder the Clown in the film, you've seen him in the film, he's the clown in the movie. He doesn't have the axe buried in his head. And I always wondered, why would you have Murder the Clown and not have the axe buried in his head? Because that was what was making him funny in the book, in my opinion, in Nightmare on Clown Street. Uh, him running around, having an axe stuck in his forehead, screaming, you know, it's murder, it's murder. You know, like, just joking and stuff as a weird, creepy clown out in public. Um, it was not fitting for murder, you know. So I guess in the horror land books, maybe he doesn't have the axe in his head. Because they said in this book that he doesn't always go around with the axe in his forehead. So I don't know. I, it's a weird thing. I want to read more about Murder the Clown, maybe I'll like it more after I read that. I don't know, but Nightmare on Clown Street was not a good book. I have a review here on the channel, it was an audio only, it wasn't a visual, um, it wasn't me on camera, that's what I mean by that. It was, uh, that book was mostly good, and then it just completely shot itself in the foot with the finale. The last, like, 10 or 20 pages of the book were so bad, <laughs> like, just absolutely awful. Um, it ruined everything about the book for me, it's one of my worst on my lists for bad Goosebumps books. Um, but it has so much going for it, being at a carnival. But I won't get into all that now. Uh, the Cuckoo Clock of Doom I've not read. Snake Lady, I don't know what she's from. I, I think that's a Give Yourself Goosebumps book, I believe. Uh, the Mummy, I've not read that yet, as I've said. Count Nightwing, I know he's from Vampire Breath. He looks just like Nosferatu in this. I don't know about in the old TV show. Maybe he did there, too. I don't know. I don't, rem I don't really remember. But... In the movie, the picture of him here, he looks just like Nosferatu, but like a really cool updated Nosferatu. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, I'm curious if that book's any good. A lot of people tell me it's like one of the worst, if not the worst, Goosebumps books. So I don't know. I'm not really a big vampire guy myself. I know that Goosebumps Aussie fan said the same thing. So I'm kind of in the same boat as him about that. I'll see one day, I guess. Uh, the Mud Monsters. What was up with that? Let me show the picture of that real quick. I recently, not too long ago, read the book of You Can't Scare Me, and I kept thinking about how much I love The Mud Monsters. It's one of my favorite Goosebumps books now. That and Ghost Camp are way, way, way up there for me, especially in the old classic era of Goosebumps uh, from the 90s. And You Can't Scare Me is, like, so underrated. And I was kind of thinking the other week, like, why were The Mud Monsters not in the film? You could have done something so much with The Mud Monsters. <clears throat> Turns out they were in the film. I don't remember seeing them. Maybe I'm just overlooking it, not thinking about it. But apparently they were in the film, and the design is absolute trash. It's supposed to be, again, they're called Mud Monsters. If you've seen either the old TV adaptation television show episode of You Can't Scare Me, if you've seen the design for them there, which is creepy, and I love that design, if you've seen that versus reading, or like even looking at the cover of the book from back in the day, or even the newer re-release cover, the Mud Monsters look fantastic. I love them. This design, I don't, I don't, I don't entirely hate, but when you're basing it around looking like the old design, the way the pumpkin heads look like a really cool updated design of the jack-o'-lanterns. This is horrible. Look at this freaking mud monster. You know how awful that looks? It looks like Swamp Thing. It looks like Swamp Thing. And these things come from the swamp, so it's like, is it a funny reference? It's not really funny, you know? It's stupid. <laughs> the Body Squeezers, of course, are mentioned here. I haven't read that. Any of the three of those books, I haven't read them. Um, which I like them in the film. I think they work pretty well as Slappy. The Invisible Boy, I haven't read any of those. Um, there's like two or three of those, I think. Like two books, but then there's also another book about, like, invisibility. There's a lot of Invisible Goosebumps books. Uh, Professor Shock, I've not read his book as far as I know. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think I have. I have the book. I just haven't read it. So I was kind of surprised to see people bring him up. Somebody else, somebody actually recently commented on one of my videos talking about how Professor Shock was in the movie. Um, again, it doesn't really affect me because I haven't read the book, so I don't know anything about that guy as a villain. Uh, one of the last entries in here is Slappy and the Haunted Car and the Annihilator 3000. Slappy, this is kind of one of those things that kind of surprised me. They referenced a book in here of his recent appearances, or last appearances, or all of his appearances for that matter, in the trivia section on the page about Slappy. And it talked about Slappy's nightmare. Now mind you, you have Bride of the Living Dummy that's in print. So was the first three Goosebumps Not a Living Dummy books. Slappy's nightmare hasn't been in print since like the 90s. Or like the 2000s, like early 2000s. So it's been a long time. Even in 2015 when the film and this book would have come out, it had been a good 15 years. So it's kind of like them referencing Slappy's Nightmare when it's been out of print for so long. It really kind of surprised me, honestly. So I'm kind of in this weird place where I don't know what to think of that. Um, maybe there was a plan to re-release that book at some point. I don't know. They did They did the re-release, the reissue for Bride of the Living Dummy. And it was a great cover. I would love to see a reissue for Slappy's Nightmare. If they would ever make Goosebumps 3, which I don't think it's going to happen, but if they did, they should release Slappy's Nightmare. They really should. I think it would be a fantastic, extremely high-selling book. It's mostly a great book until the ending. I didn't like the ending at all, but I did a review for that here on the channel as well, in case you want to check that out. Um, Haunted Car, I have the book. I haven't read it. I know it's a Christine ripoff, and I love Christine. Not the Stephen King book. It's horrible. But the movie with John Carpenter directing is amazing. I love the soundtrack and everything. Uh, the Annihilator, the Annihilator 3000, is in this uh, film, which I saw him, the little robot toy. Uh, that's from a Give Yourself Goosebumps book, which I was excited to see that referenced here too. <clears throat> Overall, in this very long, lengthy discussion of a video, Goosebumps Monster Survival Guide is cool for people who have not had a whole lot of exposure to Goosebumps if they want to know more about the monsters without reading tons and tons and tons of hundreds of pages to read about these different creatures. Um, I recommend the book for people who are fans of the 2015 film, for fans of Goosebumps in general, who are collectors and whatnot. It's a good little book to own for the most part. One of my favorite things in here, one of my favorite finds, is like I said, there was a cut scene from the 2015 film, whether it was already filmed or not, doesn't really matter, in the script at some point, which this book is based on, <clears throat> there was a reference to a haunted mask scene on the haunted mask page, which is the first monster they cover in this entire book that she was supposed to be in the bathroom at Madison High, which is the school all the kids go to, Zach and everybody, Zach, Champ, and Hannah. Uh, or is it just Zach and Champ, actually? Hannah doesn't go to school. But um, they were supposed to go in the bathroom at some point and see the haunted mask in the bathroom admiring herself because she thinks she's hot or whatever. Could have been a great scene. A lot of us were complaining in the first time when this movie came out and the 2018 haunted Halloween film. All of us were complaining about not having any haunted mask in them. And it turns out it's in both more than we actually realized it should have been. <clears throat> so that was a cool find to find about the haunted mask and Carly Beth being in the film a little bit more. Uh, I would like that scene to slip out if it was actually filmed. I don't think it was, but if it was, it should be, it should be released on the internet in my opinion, or at least on a new Goosebumps release someday. Uh, it'd be cool if they ever did it like an extended cut or anything, that'd be cool. Uh, but anyway, when it comes to Goosebumps Monster Survival Guide, what did you think about it? Put your thoughts and comments down below, guys. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. <clears throat> did you love the book? Did you hate it? Do you think it was cool? Do you think it's a nice little throwback thing to all these old Goosebumps monsters and information about them and trivia about them and how to beat them and stuff? I thought it was cool in that respect. I'd prefer people to read the actual books themselves and learn about those monsters and creatures and whatnot. Experience it the way the rest of us experienced it, you know? And like I said, even though I haven't read like half of this book... <laughs> a little under half the book, because of not reading all the books before I went into this. Um, the stuff that I did read, I was fascinated by. There was a lot of cool stuff in here, even though it's not behind the scenes stuff. Like I said, there was some cool information here I enjoyed. So it was neat. It was a fun little book. I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, for what it was, it was supposed to be a movie tie-in. It's all it was, really, naturally, and I'm fine with that. Uh, the pictures were nice. None of them were blurry. For as far as I can tell, it's a very colorful book. Uh, the inside of the book has a lot of colors to it. You know, lots of colors and all that, so that's pretty cool. Um, for what it was, it was fine. It was enjoyable. I liked it. I had a good time reading it when I was reading it without just trying to not spoil things for myself. Um, if I had to rate Goosebumps Monster Survival Guide on a five-star basis, I'd probably give it about a four out of five stars. It was very nice for what it was. Um, it's not like something I'd super recommend, but if you're a fan of Goosebumps, if you don't want to read all the books, this is good for you. This is a survival guide thing. 
um, a little guide to all these things, this information from the past. They even reference character names from those books that weren't in the film, like Billy and Sheena from Deep Trouble. Um, I thought that was kind of cool. Shocker on Shock Street, they mentioned the kids from the book that are not in the movie. So that was neat in a lot of ways. The little trivia things, little games like the, the creep test and stuff. All those things culminated into a really cool little book, I thought. Uh, something that was a little bit different from what most people would do with a movie tie-in guide book. Um, I enjoy it. I recommend it, and I loved it for the most part. Um, what are your thoughts? Put your thoughts and comments down below, guys. Again, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I think it's pretty solid for what it is. I'm sorry for such a long, rambly book review. <laughs> I just wanted to cover an extent about how there's a lot of reasons why I haven't talked about a big chunk of this book. Um, I don't know. It, I wish I had waited, but uh, I really don't need to. It's just a summary a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the time with a lot of these entries. It's kind of lazy in that regard in some ways, but I thought it was cool for people who wanted more information without reading a ton of stuff. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and happy Easter, and uh, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today, and goodbye.